After the infectious enthusiasm of the student, let's try to recapture the more sober enjoyment of an enthusiast with a fascinating hobby, collecting jade and ivory. And for one of the most interesting private collections in the country, we visit the Edgbaston, Birmingham home of Mr. George Cohen, who spends most of his spare time studying the various aspects of these mediums. Many of the intricately carved netsukas, they're the tiny pieces with two holes for threading onto sashes worn around the waist, are subjects connected with Japanese mythology and as well as their ornamental value, were compactly designed so that they could be used as the handle of a drinking flask, for example. The craftsmanship that has gone into these carvings is even more remarkable when you consider the tremendous toughness of jade as a working medium. Because of the way the constituent fibers are interlaced, jade is tougher than steel and second only to the diamond in hardness and yet the painstaking detail is unequaled in almost any other softer medium. The Chinese value jade above all precious stones, and it was one of their philosophers who said, the magic powers of heaven and earth are ever combined to form perfect results. So the pure essences of hill and water become solidified into precious jade. A Mexican superstition, by the way, says that when powdered and mixed with water, it is a remedy for internal disorders, it strengthens the frame, prevents fatigue and prolongs life. All the same, we wouldn't try it if we were you. In some parts of the world, jade was used for utilitarian purposes. But in China particularly, where the stone was held in reverence, essentially ornamental pieces like these were created. Each little piece more intriguing than the next, and all just part of a fascinating hobby. <laughs>